so today we are going to make marshmallow fondant and we're doing this because we're all stuck at home and we think this is something good you can do with your kids or your older children so marshmallow fondant has very few ingredients and it's super cheap so as you can see i have the generic kroger brand mini marshmallows this is a 10 ounce bag i found some back of my pantry this is not high tech so we're going to use that we're going to use a little splash of water when i say a splash i'm maybe a tablespoon and a half two tablespoons and it's some kind of micro safe bowl but before you do that this is just Crisco shortening, whatever brand you want to use, some kind of vegetable shortening. It's gross, but it's going to make this come off the bowl a lot easier. I'm going to completely coat this thing because eventually you're going to have to knead this by hand because you're going to melt all this down. You can flavor it with a little bit of vanilla extract if you want to, and then you're just going to sit here and stir and knead in a bunch of powdered sugar. So it's going to get messy. So if you have small children, prepare yourself. It's going to get everywhere. So, so now it's that's done. Landon, if you'll open this and then you dump it in the bowl. So he's going to dump it in the bowl. Then he's going to throw that water in on top of it. Give it a quick stir with a spatula. And I'm actually going to cover the spatula and shortening as well. Because it literally sticks to everything. All these marshmallows. He's going to stir this. And he's going to do like 30 second intervals in the microwave. And in between each interval, he'll stir this with this spatula until it's completely melted. And then we'll start incorporating the powdered sugar and the vanilla extract. Let's get that. Yeah, dump water. in the water. Mm -hmm. Give it a quick stir. And then just take it to the microwave. And here you go. And every 30 seconds, stir it. Alright, so while he's doing that, I'll go ahead and explain to you why we're doing this. Not only is it good for kids, it actually tastes good. So it's kind of like sweet Play-Doh. This is not the super decorative fondant that you're going to make a cake decorator like myself would make flowers out of for a wedding cake or a figure for a birthday cake. All right, so Landon put it in the microwave. It's completely melted. He did a couple rounds on 30 seconds. There's Sean. There you go, nice and goopy. We are going to throw in some powdered sugar. And I would say you're gonna need two to three cups. So I'm just gonna start throwing this in. Landon's gonna stir it in and then we'll transfer it over to this nonstick pad. At this point, you could flavor it, you could do vanilla extract, you could do lemon extract, almond, whatever you want. I'm not gonna flavor it. We're not going to be using this to eat. This is just to hang out and play with. So, unless you're gonna eat it, I wouldn't even stress about it. This will still taste like marshmallows and sugar. There we go. All right, so once he stirs all that in, I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle some onto our mat here, because we are gonna have to knead it onto powdered sugar to absorb more, because it's gonna be pretty sticky. And we're also going to get that shortening we had earlier and we're going to coat our hands because it's going to get all over us. All right. If you want, go ahead and dump it and I'll start kneading. That doesn't work. Yeah. It's very gooey. So even with shortening on my hands, it sticks pretty bad. Okay. So I'm literally just going to throw this over here and I'm going to keep kneading it, just going to keep folding it back on itself until it is a non-sticky consistency. Okay, so we've got about half of the sugar kneaded in. As you can tell, we're making a giant mess. And we know it's not ready because it's still really droopy. And if you try to play with it at this point, it's just gonna stick to your hands unless you have it in a mound of powdered sugar. So we have to keep doing this over and over again until all the powdered sugar is gone and we can actually pick this up. It doesn't droop at all and doesn't string off our fingers. Um, if you were going to decorate a cake with this, you'd want it to be a little sturdier, so you would actually go beyond that point, kneading the powdered sugar in until it's really kind of stiff. But we can keep it rather soft since we're not going to be covering a cake with this. But either way, we still have a little bit to go, and then we're going to add some food coloring and show you a few decorations with it. And if this is a little too messy for your liking, which I can completely understand, then you could make it the night before, just you make it after the children are in bed. And that way it's ready to go for them the next day. You can just cover it in plastic wrap, pop it in the fridge, and then the next day take it out, let it come to room temperature, which is gonna take an hour or so, uh, and then hand it off to them to play with.
Okay, so it is no longer sticking to my fingers. I could actually go a little further with this, with like kneading powdered sugar in if I was gonna create a cake with it, but it's not sticky anymore. So you could technically go ahead and use it at this point. Um, I can push on it, it's not stringing from my hands. When I push on it, it stays. So you could go ahead and start playing with it, playing with it at this point. If you were gonna decorate a cake with it, I would say you need another, roughly a cup of powdered sugar at this point. So we are gonna stop here and add some food coloring. Okay, so I made some pink, Landon made some blue, and now we're just gonna show you how you can decorate a little bit with it. So, or just make fun stuff out of it. So I've sprinkled a little bit more powdered sugar down, not as much as we had before, but enough to keep it from sticking to our mat. I'm gonna grab the rolling pin, roll mine out. Preferably you're gonna want it fairly thin if you're going to be actually using this to make anything. That, whatever Landon just did is not advised. You just put powdered sugar over the floor. Let's see. If it's nice outside, maybe you could do this outside on the back deck and let the powdered sugar all go in your yard. I'm not really sure what that would do to the grass. Okay. So I wanted to show you a couple things. This is a sugar cookie that I've cut out like a three-tier wedding cake. You can actually put these on cookies. I don't normally do that for decorative purposes. Like people, most people don't want to eat that, but if you're playing around at home, you get some cookies you want to bake, you don't want to decorate them really, but you want to do something with them, this will be a good option. Grab a knife, trace it. I'm not going to try to do a perfect job here, we're just going to do a rough cut. Except any rough edges, and I've got several. And you can lay it directly on your cookie. You could put a little bit of like corn syrup or something like that to make it a little tacky on the back, and it will perfectly sit on top of your cookie and it's made out of marshmallows. You could let it dry, or you could eat it while it's still soft. Then they could get whatever they wanted to to create little textures. You could even use the dull side of the knife and put lines in it where the tears would meet. Mine's not staying because I don't have it stuck. But you get the idea. And then you could do like more lines at the top. Fill up some little dots. Lynn's got a fork there, he's making lines in his. So you don't have to have fancy tools and fondant stuff to make it look okay. And I also want to show you how to make a rose. There's two ways to do it. You can roll it into a ball, like roll out six or eight little marble sized balls of fondant. And then you smash each, smash each one into just a little flat surface. And then once you have a few cut out or rolled out, you roll it in on itself like that, lay it down, make another one, flatten it out again, and then you're going to go around it again. And you keep doing as much as you want and make, make several different petals and you can pull it apart like that. Another way to do a rose, get all this excess off here is to roll it out a little bit thinner. And I'm gonna use a pastry cutter. And roll out one big long line. This may not even be thin enough. You can go as thin as you can. And start rolling it in on itself and kind of start bunching it, like you don't want it perfectly rolled. Kind of put some creases and pleats in there. This is gonna look almost like a flower made out of fabric. All the way around. All this excess you can pull right off. And you've got yourself a little fabric flower. 
nothing too crazy. But you can make several of these, you can make several different sizes. If you wanted it to stay put and weren't gonna be using it again, you could add a little bit of water here where it meets and it'll stay put. And then just prop it up somehow like that to it to dry. So there's your little flower. Landon has made a weird guitar and a guy with a big head. And I don't know, it's been a while since my children played with Play-Doh, obviously at their age, but I don't know what tools come with that anymore, but I'm assuming you could use the same tools. I don't think you could run it through like some of the tools that come with Play-Doh that look like spaghetti string or has to be pushed through. I think this is gonna, it's gonna start to get sticky if you do that. Okay, and you can also just use a round cutter, even if you don't have any cookie cutters, if you have a biscuit cutter, anything round, the edge of a cup, not like it would be a difference at this point. But if you had a round cutter of any shape or size and you wanted to cut out a circle, you could do that. You could also put it on top of a round cookie or on, even on top of a cupcake. And then each child could design their own. Do you want to, if it's going to be a cupcake topper or a cookie topper or just a piece that you're going to decorate, you can press a little design into it. Don't cut all the way through, just go about halfway. You can even buy edible ink markers, and I'll show you some. There are several different brands. This is a Food Writer brand. This is a Coffee Cake brand. This is an Easy Writer brand. And you can buy them in packs of all these different colors. And they usually have different tips, like this has a fat and a thin tip. That's probably a little bit more expensive. The Food Writer is the one I use a lot. Um, I feel like they last a long time. And then this one, see it's kind of a generic doesn't look that great, but it honestly doesn't matter. Or you could even get food coloring and paint with it. To do that though, you're gonna squirt it into a bowl, put a little bit of lemon extract or, I hate to say it, vodka, hmm. um, because it evaporates quickly, the lemon extract and the vodka. But if you mix in a little bit of that to your food coloring to make it dry faster and give them paint brushes that haven't already been used elsewhere, they can actually paint on this and then let it dry overnight. So I did that a lot for, um, fondant pieces when I'm doing like figures and backgrounds, that sort of thing, or even directly onto the cake. That's how you paint on cake. So they can do that and personalize their own little fondant discs to put on cupcakes or cookie. And I will say though, if they do that with the edible ink markers, it's better let this dry for about an hour beforehand, so it's a little bit more firm and it won't puncture if they push too hard. Because if they use those, they have to barely touch because it is not meant to push hard like you do with a pencil or a pen. I don't know what you're doing. Oh, guitar and man, yes. Guitar and man. And you could also do like a tie-dye look, so you get the blue, you get the pink, separate, then put them together and twist them, kind of knead them together a little bit, but not all the way. Kind of looks like tie-dye. And then when you roll it out, you have a little swirl of the two colors. Looks like, I don't know, cotton candy. But if you wanted to make it a little bit more 3D, you would have to, his head's gonna fall off when you pick him up. You would have to, like if he wanted to make this stand up, he could put toothpicks in his legs, like all the way up as far as you can get them and maybe put another one down the back of his head and then let him dry for a few days. And it might do a little bit better that way. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of works that way. But you can also, if you really wanted to get into this, if this, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Homeschooling, this homeschooling lasts forever. And we have to start doing so many crafts that we run out of ideas. You can go to craft stores and buy all these little fondant tools. They have several different kinds. They come in little kits together to Hobby Lobby or Michaels and decorate your, your little fondant perfectly well. These are great they have little indentations. And that's how you roll out your flower petals. It's beautiful. Anyway, so we hope that you've enjoyed this. Hope you got some good ideas, something to keep your kids busy the next few weeks. You can do any color. I would not suggest doing red or black just because they will stain your hands and your teeth really badly. And you can make this every week a new batch and they'll think it's fun. And just 
clean up the mess. Thanks for watching.